Hello, grade 12 psychology class. Welcome back to another lecture. We have lesson seven, and you guessed it, perception part three. Uh, let's go. We have constancy, constancy as our key points up here, one, two, three, and then we talk about illusions. So constancy uh, is when we have learned to perceive certain objects in our environment. We tend to see them in the same way regardless of changing conditions. So when I see my dog, uh, no matter if it's dark or light in the room, uh, whether she's wet or dry, like I mostly perceive the same dog. Uh, I know that uh, like she's black uh, with like white on the paws, despite the lighting, the shadows, the angles, um, like I, I, j I perceive her the same regardless of the conditions. Um, you probably judge the whiteness of the various por portions of your pages to be fairly constant, no matter if you're in light conditions or in shadow conditions. Uh, people are able to perceive objects as the same by the processes of constancy. So there's size constancy, shape constancy, color constancy, pardon me, and probably other constancies as well, but those are the ones we're gonna talk about. So, size constancy. An example of size constancy will illustrate how we have an automatic system for perceiving an object as being the same size whether it's far or near. For example, I know the sizes of my friends. Uh, so a friend walking towards me does not instantly change into a giant as they get closer to me. Even though the images inside my eyes go from small to large, I perceive that person as the same size, not as miniature and then giant. Um, that is size constancy. I have an understanding that that person is that size no matter their distance from me. Uh, the same thing really happens with color. So color constancy is when you look out a window at night and you see that the trees, grass, parked cars, they're not in the same uh, color or brightness uh, as they are, but you already know that the grass is green. So you perceive it to be green. You know that the car is red or black. So you perceive it to be red or black. You perceive this quality of color and brightness even under the condition of different illumination. We have an understanding that that car, that grass, that tree is always going to be the same color whether it's day or night or evening or morning or it's cloudy or rainy. Um, even though it looks different, we still perceive it as green uh, if it's grass, that is. Shape constancy is the same idea here. So when you open a door, um, no matter if it is completely closed, partially open or all the way open, we have an understanding that the door is a rectangle. Even if it's looking like this, we haven't gone like, oh man, the door is now just a sliver of what it needs to be. No, we understand that there's a glass panel behind it and a door handle, and that if we were to move it, then it would uh, close this door. So that's shape constancy. Uh, we perceive the door uh, as being rectangular in shape, even though our view of the shape changes as it opens. Uh, so that's shape constancy. And we're cruising through the key points, as you can see. Uh, so that brings us to illusions. So illusions are incorrect, incorrect perceptions. Illusions can be useful in teaching us about how our sensations and perceptual systems work. So when we look at these here, uh, this line looks longer than this line, even though they're exactly the same. Uh, no matter what I do, even though I know that they are the same size, this line absolutely looks longer than this line. Illusions are created when perceptual cues are distorted so our brains cannot correctly interpret space, size, and depth cues. So this line looks longer because it's got extensions on it going this way. This line looks shorter because it's got like kind of a contraction on it, but they are exactly the same. To me, this looks way bigger in B than this one down here, even though they take up the exact same amount uh, of size. Again, very confusing, it's an illusion. Um, if you isolate this and isolate this, they are the same size, even though to me, they do not look it. So a possible explanation for these types of illusions is that even though the patterns are two-dimensional, our brain is trying to treat them as if they're three-dimensional. And these illusions have features that usually indicate distance in three-dimensional space. So for example, this linear here, this linear perspective, it indicates three-dimensional space, even though these are two dimensions. 
So that's why our brain perceives it um, to be different sizes. This perceptual compensation is unconscious and automatic and I cannot seem to shake it and uh, neither will you be able to shake it. Here's an illusion, uh, and I'm sorry for the horrible pixelated quality, but we have a child and his mother here. So this individual, or this room shows individuals um, and their sizes look dramatically different uh, because we perceive the room to be rectangular, but it's actually at an angle this way. Even though the, the whole uh, windows, the floor, all the squares, they are shaped so that it looks like it's uh, flat and that she is miniature and he is giant. That's actually not the case. So, in fact, the ceiling and the walls are slanted so that the back wall is shorter and closer on the right than it is on the left. And even when you know this, even when you look at this and you know this, I cannot perceive her to be the same size or larger than him. Yeah, even though I know this about the windows and the floor, and I know she's larger than he is, I cannot perceive it. Like, I, I have that knowledge, but my senses cannot tell me that. Um, so even when you know how this illusion was achieved, you still accept the peculiar difference in sizes of the two people because the windows, the walls, the ceiling, it all appears rectangular to you. So you accept the sizes of the people. Your experience of the rectangular room overrides your knowledge of how this trick is done. You have way more experience with rectangular rooms, so your brain automatically overrides it to this one particular weird instance. We have a couple of more, I don't know if you'd call them illusions, but if you look here, it's really easy to pick out the P, but can you pick out the O? Eventually you might be able to, after a little bit more time, it's easy to pick out the P, but the O is so similar uh, that our brain kind of assimilates it into the, into the group. And with this one over here, uh, you can perceive the cube from two different angles. I had a lot of trouble with this until I was just getting ready to record this. So I was record uh, always perceiving the X as being closer to me and me looking down on the object. I couldn't figure out how to perceive it as the Y point being closer to me, but if I imagine it being suspended from a ceiling and then like this is the farthest point away from you, this is closest, so this is the bottom. Right? Maybe I'm looking at it from a, under a glass table, but like here we have some sides and we can't see the top even though we can see through it. So it took me some time to perceive both ways, but uh, I actually figured it out, which I was pretty proud of. Uh, okay, we have the important terms for you to do, and then you want to find two optical illusions and explain how they work. That's going to be your assignment um, for this lesson. So if you have questions, please let me know. But thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I will see you soon.